So what's up, folks? Welcome to another action-packed episode of Let's Not Be Trash, the place where you can come and talk about real shit. Like, what kind of real shit? Oh, we got a lot on the agenda today, um, but we're going to start about what we're mad about today. Mm. You know, we like to get that. I, I say get your toxic out. Sometimes yeah. you just got to let your toxic out. <laughs> like, and you I'm, toxic out? All right, cool. I, I'm going to be writing about how I got my toxic out. And it cost me a, a trip to the Apple store that was 12 hours, and I nearly had to get a new phone. Oh, oh, you threw your phone? Yeah, I threw my phone, but luckily it was under warranty, so it didn't. It only cost me time and, like, some dignity. Wait, why would you throw your phone? Because I was very upset. And mm. uh, as men, sometimes when we think we run out of outlets, luckily we don't hopefully hurt people, mm-hmm. but sometimes... It, it, my case gets the brunt of it, and you know that case was not tested for what I put that phone through. It was not so. tested for aggression. <laughs> no, though that should be a test, male aggression, when they when they make cases now. Mm. Um, well, are you feeling better today now? Yeah, I'm feeling better. Some of the stuff, you know, uh, still going on, but I'm writing about it right now because I think that there are ways to have outlets. I think it is good, you know, if you have a punching bag in your house, ain't nothing wrong with that. That's true. But just be careful and not do property damage to yourself or anybody else. <laughs> you do probably damage to yourself. Exactly. You got to sue yourself for pain and suffering. Yeah. Mm, damn, so what bro. you mad about today, Stanley? What am I mad about? I don't really have a lot to be mad about. I guess I'm mad about the Tiffany Caban race and the fact that right. they're not counting all the absentee ballots and, and it may cost Tiffany Caban the race. For those of you who don't know, Tiffany Caban is running for the New York City Queens district attorney position against mm-hmm. Melinda Katz. And last week at the end of the election, they had said that she had more than likely won by 1,000 votes. But there were 4,000 absentee votes that had to be counted. Mm -hmm. And now all sorts of funny business is going on with those votes. So I'm nervous. I'm nervous, too. I mean, I thought this was a wrap. It looked like from the Initial Times article it was. Yeah, right. Like, they was talking about it like it was. I mean, this is what, like you said, this is what happens when the machine gets involved. This is what happens when, this is why we're just talking about this on Let Your Voice Be Heard, that the machine... It's it's being taken down in pieces, Mm -hmm. you know. There's not just like even even same thing with Donald Trump. Donald Trump is just part of a white supremacist machine Mm -hmm. that has been in this country for a very long time Mm. and still has deep roots in this country. Fuck your shit, King. So even when Donald Trump is gone, the people who elected him are there. Donald Trump really doesn't matter that much. I know he'd hate to hear that, Mm -hmm. but if Russia and the United States found someone that's like Donald Trump or even worse. They would prop him up instead. Yeah. He just happened to be dumb enough, available enough, Mm -hmm. greedy and narcissistic enough to be the candidate right now. Yeah. So there's still going to be Donald Trumps out there if we don't break that foundation. I'm not saying the Queen's machine is the same thing, Mm -hmm. but on a lower scale and even among Democrats, there still is a machine that's stopping us from electing candidates and getting to a progressive uh, state in this country um, like Tiffany Caban. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a that's a, a a fact, a friendly fact. So I'm with you on that one all the way. But I you know things have been going pretty good for me, so I don't have much to be mad about or angry about, and I'm happy about that. Um, you know what I've been doing actually? I've been really working on ways to bring myself more peace. I noticed at, at the end of the New York State Legislative Session, which ended on June 23rd, for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, mm-hmm. I came back to the city and I was just feeling like, feeling like super drained and like. Had a little sp- like bowel depression, and so I had really like made an effort to do things that put me in a good space and like helped like mm-hmm. to get some positive energy in the room. So I've been going on, on a lot more walks, mm-hmm. um, just by myself, mm-hmm. listening to music. Um, I started meditating in the morning. That's mm-hmm. been a huge help. Really? Yeah, man. I didn't expect it, but like I found like a five minute guided meditation, and I did it, and like I felt so good at the end of it. I do it almost every morning now. I didn't do it this morning, but I was in a bit of a rush. Um, I'm trying to create some more routines for myself in the morning. So now in the morning, I wake up. Um, if Marilyn's not there, I make up my bed. I meditate for five minutes, and then I'm gonna do my. Seven, I'm gonna put like some eggs to boil in, on the stove, mm-hmm. and then I'm gonna do my 750 words. Some of this is still aspirational. Like I haven't like gone all the way and started mm-hmm. doing these things yet. But like those are the things I want to do. Then I hop in the shower, finish in the shower, eat your boiled eggs, and then get the hell out of the house. Mm-hmm. And like that's the kind of routine that I want to set up for myself in the morning to really get myself going. Um, I want to like get some plants for the apartment to green the space up, and I'm really try- just trying to like be more intentional about creating an environment where I can like decompress and relax. So hopefully, like I won't be mad about things like that ho- that hold on to me for a while because I'm creating these like pieces to make life a little bit like you know more manageable. 
Yeah, and what you're talking about, a lot of that is self-care, too. Yeah. And a lot of people have a certain image of self-care that it's like putting a mud mask on your face and cucumbers and shit. And if that's your thing, that's fine. You heard what they do with cucumbers now? What? Oh, you haven't seen it? People are sucking cucumbers for clout on the internet. I I don't want to sound toxic, so please explain. <laughs> <laughs> like they're su- just like that, like sucking cucumbers like their dick on the internet. What? Yeah, and are like they people are complaining because get people are porn? buying all the cucumbers up so they can like deep throat the cucumbers. Wait, it's it, a cucumber challenge. It, but it but everybody knows it's entirely sexual in nature, right? Y- yes, yes. That you don't. You don't have people on here that think they're doing something mad innocent. Okay. No, 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 no. I no, hope it's not. All just like, oh, no, because everybody gets in these challenges. All right. So I, I didn't <laughs> know about that. Um, it doesn't surprise me. Put cucumbers on your face, not in your mouth, unless you're eating it. Yeah. All right. I mean, whatever. <laughs> like you said, don't yuck your yum. Whatever floats your boat. But mm-hmm. that's more a private thing. I don't think that should be a challenge <laughs> for anybody. Um, oh. Anyway. So going back to uh, other ways cucumbers are used, um, I mean, self-care takes many forms. And for you, it might be to take a walk, to meditate, to cook. Um, You said something interesting about making the bed. There's an expression I heard just called, every day you make the bed. What that means, though, I actually first heard it in the show. And it means that basically every day you do something small that shows you're putting in some effort. Hmm. So no matter how bad your day is, if you feel like, you know, the most you can do is make your bed, because sometimes that's how significant depression is. Yeah. It's hard for people to get out the bed, hard for people to get out the house. Yeah. I used to describe it as, like, it, your starting point feels like below zero. Yeah. Right? So most people, zero is like a neutral zone. Yeah. And it takes work for you just to get to zero. Mm-hmm. So for some people, that means they can't even get out the house or like simple things are a struggle. Yeah. So if every day you make the bed, you're basically putting forth an effort to do something that you didn't have to do to say, I'm going to make an effort today, even if it's with something small. That's a so, good point. Yeah. So that's that's an important thing, no matter what's going on in your life, not just to keep the house nice. Um, but yeah, I think all of those things are really important. And you should do the self-care that's important for you, no matter what it is. And men should absolutely have self-care in their lives. Yeah, that's... And it can be exercising. It can be biking. Um, to me, the, the joke that I felt about throwing my phone was, oddly, there was something therapeutic about it. Yeah. <laughs> because I threw, what happened was I threw it so hard, I, the display broke, which means that not just the screen, but anything that could display a message. Mm. So... Essentially, some of the messages that got me upset were now gone. Mm. And I lost the messages also because it couldn't update during a certain time when I. Uh. C- so it's almost like I put a bit of a clean slate and I like show the messages who's boss. So <laughs> I'm not saying you should always do that, but if it doesn't hurt anybody else and if your phone is under warranty. <laughs> <laughs> if it's not like Listen, my phone's so expensive I'll go to the gym and punch <laughs> something <laughs> well wait, the thing I did that was dumb was I threw my phone and then I punched my bag punch your bag first don't throw your phone because yeah. your bag can live through that but your phone may not yeah that's a really good point but I know like it is good though that like you're trying to find things that are gonna help you yeah. to cope you really do because sometimes you're, and, like sometimes you have all this energy and it's not healthy to just to just like leave it there no because you, like you, for me I feel it in my stomach and like it like Pulse it like does. through like through my chest. Um, for those of you who are like worried about your like physical fitness, it's bad for your weight. You actually gain weight from that stress. Mm-hmm. Um, for those of you who just like want to like take care of your mental health, it's just good to find a way to burn it off a healthy way. So what I've been doing is like walking. That's been my burning it off because like I, I don't want to do the biking because I don't want to commit to having to carry my bike five flights of stairs. I don't want to go to the gym and like so like I'm just walking walking and that's mm-hmm. helping because i get to walk i get to think i get to process and kind of just get lost a little bit mm-hmm. and that isn't helpful to me but find your thing maybe you need something with a little bit more like aggression but find it thing. yeah i used to go to the batting cage i used to have one by me mm-hmm. and that helped a lot but then they they moved it how dare they yeah um speaking of baseball so now i want to move on now i want to move on to something that d- did you you follow MOB, so you knew about Tyler Skaggs, yeah, the player so who who died. The I starting actually, pitcher for the um, Los Angeles Angels, I s- right? I actually still don't know how he did. They said they found him unresponsive in his hotel room, Yeah, which, you know, like, I mean, main things, we'll wait till we hear the coroner's report, but, you know. That could mean suicide. Yeah. Frequently it does, but it may not. But I just wanted to open up to what John Carlos Stanton said. 
So John Carlos Stanton um, lost a teammate a while ago, Jose Fernandez. Oh yeah, on the when boat he was accident. on the Marlins, and I just want to read what he wrote. All right, R.I.P. Bro, my heart goes out to your family. My message to the Angels, while having no time for yourself, is to grieve, t- is to hug each other, laugh, cry, lift the ones taking it extra hard up. You're going to wonder why all of this is happening. Is it real? Why are you sitting up to play a game that seems irrelevant? Some anger will ensue. Why you have to grieve in a fishbowl. A lot will go through your mind, so stay together through that. The first days back to schedule are the weirdest feeling, from the energy to the questions to having to walk by his locker. Try to focus and understand how important your strength is for his family, all of your supporters, and anyone looking for the power to overcome something. They're looking at you for guidance, so you all really need each other right now. Stay strong, fellas. I'm thinking about you. I thought that that was a very, very heartfelt statement. Yeah. And he talked about some – the way he phrased it, he phrased it in a way that you don't always hear baseball players talk. Especially, you know, if you look at John Carlos Stanton, like that is like your archetype of like a masculine yeah. ma- appearance-wise. I'm not saying I, – I don't – you know, I've only heard him through interviews. But appearance-wise, that is kind of the archetype. He's of a masculine macho man. He's, he's six foot six. Over 245, brolic as hell. He looks like he's punching the baseball in the face every time he, he hits it. And, for and a he run. can just hit it with, like, it looks like a toothpick in his hand, the bat. Yeah. And he can hit it the other way. He can miss hit a ball and it's a home run. Yeah. But anyway, I really liked that statement. But it got me to thinking, like, what has to happen for someone like John Carlo or any man to be able to be that vulnerable mm. to talk? When can men grieve? When can men be vulnerable? And, you know. It's you don't hear something like this unless somebody dies. Yeah. Like even if someone's going through a tough time, yeah. even if um someone's going through even a slump or other types of issues are coming up throughout the year or if men just want to uplift other men about other topics that they're going through outside of this. Like you don't hear this. It 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 was beautiful to hear this from Giancarlo who I like more and more as a person. Yeah. But it does make me think, like, what what needs to happen for men to be this honest and open and vulnerable? Well, I mean, we, I think we know what needs to happen. We got to change the way that we talk about emotions in men. And I think having people like Juan Carlos Stanton be able to have that conversation mm-hmm. in such a transparent way is really, really healthy. And it helps because there is somebody who worships him, who saw that and, like, knows now it's okay to grieve and feel pain because this person who's, like, if there was any such thing as an alpha male, which I don't mm-hmm. agree that there is such a thing as an alpha mm-hmm. male, Stanton is a fucking alpha male. Yeah, he looks like steroids take him. <laughs> like he's like he's a monster. Not that he's ever done steroids. Yes, he's, he's very much against. He's it. definitely yeah. not taking the steroids. Yeah, that that <laughs> looks very real. What yes. Do you got? Yeah, but like when someone like that who like fits into the stereotype of like what a manly man is can be, open up and share like that, that changes the conversation for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. So we need more people like him speaking up. And not just around issues of death, which is very hard, but mm-hmm. just, like, issues of life in general. I, I agree. I think this is a great step because he didn't he, – he could have gone about this many ways. Yeah. But instead he said, you know, what I really like is um, – my heart goes out, family, a message to the angels while having no time for yourself to grieve is to hug each other, laugh, cry, lift the wounds, taking it extra hard up. Mm-hmm. He he mentioned like some things that, you know, it's okay to cry during this time. I definitely think that it's important. Bell Hooks actually talked about this in her book, which is that the only time that she saw men cry were during death and during church. Yeah. So that's why she liked church so much. It wasn't yeah. so much about the God, you know, mm-hmm. aspect of it. It was the vulnerability that she saw in men yeah. that she did not see in other occasions. This yeah. was the time men can be emotional. Mm. And it's good that men are emotional, you know, when they worship and that men are accepting other emotions when someone passes. And John yeah. Carlo really took it the extra mile. But we need to be there for men um, and their emotions and vulnerabilities before yeah. it gets to this point. Before, like, they're, like, ready to, like, punch a fucking wall. Before because, that. Like, they're, like, you and know. before, you know, it means that someone dies. Yeah. Okay, so I I know we got some things on the agenda. So I want to move on um, to we, of course, take sexual harassment various and, and, and sexual assault very seriously. It's a big part of our show. And I don't play favorites here. So Neil deGrasse Tyson has been accused by multiple women. Really? Yes. Neil deGrasse Tyson? Yes. What the fuck, man? Can we have nobody? <laughs> like, is everyone just trash? Multiple, multiple women. Oh, man. Come on. Of one was outright rape. 
of drugging her and then uh. raping her. Another uh. one was inviting her to his apartment for what she thought was more of a professional setting, and then she felt touching her inappropriately, talking about inappropriate things, and then she left. Um, there's, I believe, two more. I forgot the exact nature oh of God, it. Yeah. But here's the point. We can't play favorites. Look, um, a lot of people maybe didn't like Bill Cosby, but yeah. I loved Bill Cosby before I found out what happened to him. The, the Cosby Show was my favorite show, period. Because the Cosby Show at the time showed the type of relationship I wanted to have with my wife mm -hmm. down the line. When I saw Bill Cosby and Felicia Rashad loving each other, but in an equal way. Like there was yeah. even a scene when uh, one of the daughter's boyfriends comes in and uh, Felicia Rashad brings Bill Cosby some uh, tea or coffee. Mm -hmm. And he's like, oh, you got it like that. And then Felicia Rashad, Rashad sits him down and says, I bring him coffee because I love him and he would do the same for me. Hello, somebody. And... And there's always and there's that scene where on the couch and he feeds her the apple. I was mm. like, that's gonna be me and Bay someday. That's gonna so, be you and yeah, Yesenia. <laughs> I don't I don't know where we're going with that, but yeah, there's, hey, the, there's a lot of fine Yesenias out there. But anyway. Yesenia's in, in Kingsbridge. <laughs> I know, I know, what you, I know your type. No, King. no doubt, no doubt. But anyway, all that to say that he was the type of man that I admired on the show, mm. and I a lot of people thought that Cliff, Cliff Huxtable was Bill Cosby, and yeah. it's not. Bill Cosby is a rapist. Mm -hmm. He took advantage of women. He took advantage of his power. Yeah. And after a while, I didn't want to believe it at first, but I believed it. And yeah. now he is so out of my range as a person. Yeah. I still believe the show has value. Yeah. I think we can separate those things to an extent because mm -hmm. the show is greater than Bill Cosby. Mm -hmm. But as a person, Bill Cosby is a rapist. He's He acted like complete shit towards women, a misogynist, yeah. and I have very little love for him as a person. Uh -huh. We cannot play favorites with this shit. So I love Neil deGrasse Tyson. I believe these allegations are true. Yeah. I don't think four women come together with such detailed allegations uh -huh. out of fame. And yeah. knowing what can ensue, death threats, all the things that can happen to yeah, them, knowing how likely. beloved he is, yeah. for them to come out against him, I believe them. Yeah, it just it's you know like you got to take these seriously because of all the things you mentioned, mm -hmm. the risks that women take when they like when they generally come out come forward about their assaulters, but the risks they take when it's against somebody with a profile like Neil deGrasse Tyson, they mm -hmm. could be risking blacking them, blackballing themselves from 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 like the science and the astrophysics industry. Like they're, exactly. they're taking a lot of risk, so I'm inclined to like take them seriously and, and want to believe them. That's wild, man. That's fucking wild. And one wow. of these people has been saying it for years. And really? And just now is getting... I'm trying to find the right person who said it for you. Oh, here it is. I, I hope I'm saying her name right. Yeah. Tashia Ahmed El Mat. Mm -hmm. So he, this accusation is from 1984. What? When they were graduate students at the University of Texas. Wow. At Austin. And she has been saying this for years. It's only now because of the other women. And wow. because, of course, of Twitter and all these things, but yeah. also because power in numbers, that this is happening, that, that now she's getting attention for it. Neil deGrasse Tyson got to own up to this. Listen, yeah. am I saying he should be canceled for the rest of his life? If the man actually reforms himself, owns this, I think so many of these guys, if they were to say, I did this, I own it, I was a terrible person, don't do this, and they had talks with other men, that is the most powerful thing they can do, to simply say, don't be like me. I mean, also, like, accountability, and how does that look? Yeah. Because, I mean, I I think that, like, you know, we gotta, if the women are even willing to, we gotta talk about the accountability part, too. Absolutely. So, but, like, yeah, like, if they do that and they're held accountable, I think there's a space for these men to re-enter society and be given a second chance. But we can't even get to that conversation yet because people are just, like, getting away scotch free. Exactly. Like, and, and he is on his way. He got his TV show back. He is on his way. What? To, he's, he's so beloved that even that so far this hasn't gotten enough traction. See, That's, this is just not right. It's not right. Uh, like I said, we can't play favorites with this. We are, we are able to separate things. Look, I know it's hard for some people to even yeah. bring this up, but I did watch Finding Neverland. Yeah. It was very difficult. Mm -hmm. And I separate the music from who Michael Jackson was. First yeah. of all, it's a little different because Michael Jackson is no longer with us. And I also, I'm not saying this as an excuse for him, mm -hmm. but he did basically have no childhood, and he was also abused as a child. Yeah. So those things can come into play, and his mental development may have been in some ways like a child. Yeah. But 
either way, it doesn't excuse him. I believe his abuser I, uh, hit the accusers as well, but I still listen to his music. And you can believe that Neil deGrasse Tyson is still a genius, yeah. but genius does not excuse him from raping people. Wow. Period. That was a fucking killjoy. Yeah. God damn it. Neil deGrasse Tyson, we can't... Uh, oh, why can't people just not be trash? Oh, man. I, you know, I'm telling you, so many guys think when they get to a certain liberal, conservative, it mm-hmm. doesn't matter. When they get to a certain position of power, they feel like this is just what it comes with it. I get to do this. This comes with the territory. And it doesn't, you know, and I'm trying to think about just like, holy fuck, dude. Mm -hmm. It's just, you know, I know so many women who say that they don't trust men and like they don't feel safe around men. Like, holy shit. Like, let let me let's let's talk about this for a little bit, too, because Neil deGrasse Tyson is somebody who is supposed to be a person of of just like a higher intellect. Mm -hmm. If someone like him, who was who's like supposed to be like love. Heads and shoulders like smarter than you and I mm-hmm. is doing In astrophysics, this. Let's put some yeah, like name. let's yeah, like we got a serious problem. We got a serious, serious problem. Look, this or raising proves, rapist. I mean, this is how internalized it is. Um, also, something that's really dumb is he tried to put science into the investigation of himself. He said, "I'm a student in the scientific method, and this will be investigated thoroughly." And it was basically like his own network that investigated him. And of course, they uh, have interest in bringing back his show. Yeah. And the other thing that he did was he leveraged race here because the first accuser was an African American woman mm-hmm. or woman of color. Yeah. And he kind of said she ran into him in the hall later, and he basically told her, "We got to stick together." And it's like, what the what? fuck? Like, just because someone's of color and you think that excuses your behavior, that you got to stick together, she does not. That's not like there's so many levels of fucked up there. Yeah. Um. So, I mean, you can read more about it. There's finally now there's some coverage. Oh, my God. But uh, I believe it's now up to four. Four? Yeah. Oh, my God. So what the a, fuck? As, as recently as being someone being an assistant on Cosmo. So this has been a recurring behavior. I mean, the first was enough, of course. Yeah. But this is clearly a pattern of behavior. And if we don't address it, he will continue. He has no <sighs> impetus to stop. How many serial sexual, sexual assaulters do we just have in general in this world? Like, it's scary to think about all the men mm-hmm. out here who are, like, harassing and, like, assaulting countless women. And there's no accountability. And then they're raising other young boys and like male identifying, masculine identifying people to be assaulters as well. Mm-hmm. That shit is so fucking mind blowing. It is. And let's not, I mean, there are gradations to this, of course. Yeah. Like, I'm not even, Neil deGrasse Tyson is not Harvey Weinstein, but he's getting close. Because yeah. <laughs> it's just because of the quantity is not the same. I mean, drugging someone and raping them. And then after that, saying we <laughs> got to stay. I mean, there's some real twisted shit there. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a lot of people who it seems it doesn't stick as much with. And also, I'm not saying all the offenses are the same. Like, listen, I wrote a whole thing about Aziz Ansari. I think what yeah. he did is fucked up. I don't think he's on the same level. And he, to be honest, the, the idea his career is over is bullshit. He has a new special on Netflix. Oh, he does? And he, he kind of apologized. But I just don't get why these guys can't really own it. Him and Louis C.K. Well, I'll defend um, Aziz Ansari. Yeah. Because, like, he did apologize to the woman in the text. And then, like, he did. And it was a pr- and then it was a private thing, and then she put the article out, and then he said in his like statement, "I thought it was a private situation to have between me and this person, and I apologized to her then." Mm-hmm. That was he. He apologized to, to her then. The issue was, look, I'm not saying I'm glad it, but what I hate is that it's also always associated with his name. I want to mm-hmm. take out his name from this and put it just into pressuring someone into sex because yeah. that's what it was. We have to talk about a culture of men feeling like they can pressure it into a yes. Yeah. That's not good either. Yeah, that's not. That's not. So I'm glad we addressed that. And he doesn't deserve to be in the, in the same lump. But I feel like the most powerful thing Aziz Ansari could do, I mean, I'm glad he gave a semi-apology. The thing was he kind of said, I didn't know what I did wrong, but I'm sorry. Like, that was where it's like, I'm gl- I hope he's rethinking to understanding more of it. Yeah. But this man has such a platform. Yeah. And he is beloved still. If he made this into an episode of Master of None, yeah. that's it. I don't it's think he over. could, honestly. Um, I mean, I still have lots, like lots of like like issues with that situation in particular. Mm-hmm. Um, like, I think you're right. Like, like that was well, his behavior was like completely inappropriate. But I really think he did not know. A lot of guys didn't know, right? 
and like he should deal with that. But like I don't think there's space for like him to do that because then there'll be criticism of like he's trying to make money off of this woman's trauma or like you know he's being like totally in like just like insensitive and like just like doing whatever he wants to do and it's not really it doesn't seem like there's space for men publicly to kind of like process those things in a way that's like showing growth because even Louis C.K. who well I don't know where the fuck he is in the spectrum it's like is he like has he learned anything from this like is he does he have thoughts about this can he talk about this I have no idea because like the public won't even let him like come out with his but he's not but he's not talking about introspectively uh, he when he returned to the stage he said guys I've been through hell I'm yeah. like think about the women you put through hell yeah. for the longest time when you also were saying that they were lying for the longest time yeah that's weird so, so you know what like I, I have some sympathy for them but at the mm-hmm. same because I think if they want but at the same time it's like I want to see them actually come clean be accountable yeah. say I not just I'm sorry, but listen, this is bad male behavior. I don't want other men to do this. I think okay. – I don't know what, how the public would react if they do it, yeah. it's something like that, but I still think it's the right thing to do. Well, Aziz – well, you know what? I'm glad – Aziz didn't do like this is the bad men behavior thing. He did talk about it publicly like almost like a couple of months ago, and then he was like, you know, what did he say? He was like, it's been hard for him to process this, and like it's made him look back at like how he was behaving with other women and in that situation and like just trying to figure it out. And he's like, it's been a hit. But then he he did that piece, which I thought was good. But then he talked a lot about, like, how it impacted him personally and, like, how he was worried about how other people perceived him and stuff like that, which was interesting but not relevant, I guess. So, hmm. Still thinking about it. How about we get to this topic anyway? Uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Oh, God. And, like, people who we previously weren't, you know, like. Yeah, man. As a. I don't, I don't, I don't like, I don't, like, I, don't, I haven't canceled disease. But no, I, it's I don't, not I don't just, cancel But I'm either. not like you know I'm not rushing to go see his shit anymore either. Well, I still, th- I still think that there's a way for. I I know you're saying some people can look at it like monetizing it, but I think you know I think there's a way for him to really educate other men about it. Um, I, I mean, in his case, I mean we've disagreed with about this before. I don't think that he was like purposely trying to be like a piece of shit. I think that men don't get taught to pay attention to women and listen to cues and it's all about the sex and he fucked up and he should be held accountable for that. Uh-huh. But I don't think it was like a, a just a straight up like domination thing. That doesn't make it any better because there are some people who weren't socialized to like understand that women have a right to give consent or take it away. And I'm not here defending them either. But I do think that like that situation was a case of like he didn't know any better and there was probably space to have like a maybe not for her as well, a victim, the thing, but like for someone else to have a conversation with him about like what this looks like, and then also the larger conversation about like how men should be interacting with women during sex, which you work on a lot on the website with the consent mm-hmm. pieces, didn't happen because it, of the way the article came out. Yeah, but the thing about Aziz Ansari is that he doesn't get much leeway because he came out as this real feminist for the longest time. So the idea is that you would be thinking about these things. So. He he's he had an episode on his show about how women get harassed. Yeah. So it's it's hard for that guy to get much slack in there. I would think that because he's been decent, he would get more slack. I think actually, no, I think he got more slack than other people. Actually, no. It's yeah because if you come out as a someone who is a feminist and a supporter of women, it's kind of like it's not nearly to the degree, but. This is part of the reason why, among his behavior, Eric Schneiderman got so hated. Because he came out as this women's rights advocate and then acted that way behind the scenes. Now, Aziz Ansari's offense wasn't even close to that. But he did he did come off as someone who's very mindful and thoughtful. And if a guy, even if he doesn't know exactly what to do, if a guy wrote a whole episode on it, and you're talking about monetizing, he was in a writer's room with multiple people. You would think that once a woman says slow down, moves his hand away, that he would start thinking again. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Um, but then also, like, because we're men and we've grown up in this patriarchy and system, you never are an expert. You never completely figure it out. So you are prone to fuck up. What right. if that was one of those cases? Yeah. Uh, I feel it's a little different. I think the reason I push back a bit is that it's a little different when someone is almost educating you in front of you and you're not listening. I mean, well, I still argue that so like she was not clear. Oh, that's what I was going to say. A lot of people, um, like a lot more people gave sympathy to Aziz in other situations mm-hmm. because 
of that situation. I remember Selena, who's been on the show, mm-hmm. my, my whole co-host, unless your voice be heard, she was like, whatever the article, I was upset for Aziz because like she was not clear. Uh-huh. That's a lot. A lot of folks have said that men and women, but like um, the point that I was trying to make at no point during that encounter did she say, "I do not want to do this with you." So, like, he's not, he's not what you call it. He doesn't get like slack for like her not saying that, but it does point to the space that men, unless you were saying it exactly like that, don't. A lot of them do not get it. One, mm-hmm. two, women do not feel comfortable enough to say that to men. Because of the implications. Right. And then three, we couldn't even have that conversation because the way the whole article came out from... Babe.net is now defunct. It was a horrible article, yeah. which, which is why the framing of it did a disservice to her. Because yeah. the whole article was written terribly. But this is the thing, though. I mean, I see what, I see what you're saying she could have, but this is like maybe Shouldn't her second interaction with a guy who has a lot of power, is famous, who she's admired... And there's two things here. We can disrupt, we can disbelieve or argue about the account, or what most people did in this case is they believed the account, but they said based on that account, it's not a big deal. So uh-huh. if we're believing the account, she did say, she did say, she, uh, let's slow down for a bit. Right. She did say, let's slow down for a bit. That doesn't mean that you want to stop. That might mean you want to like take a second to slow down for a bit. Um, he's, I don't, I don't know, man. Maybe I'm fighting for this so hard because I feel like maybe not this version of Stanley, but a younger version of Stanley could have easily gotten to, into a situation like that where, like, it seems like she's into it and, like, maybe, like, she's, like, being a little reticent because, like, you know, maybe she's nervous or, like, maybe she's, like, she doesn't sure if she go for it. And, like, everything that I've been taught as, like, a, a guy when courting women is that, like, you know, give it a shot. And if she explicitly says no, then you stop. But if she doesn't, that means like maybe she like she still wants you to go, but like you know like she doesn't want to like just seem like she's like a hoe or something like that. I mean, I have no better way, no better way to say that. So maybe that's why I'm defending it because I'm like this could have easily happened to me like back in 2010, 2011 because like she's like, well, I don't want to look like that type of girl, but I don't want you to stop, so I'm not gonna say, I'm not gonna say hell yes, go on, but I'm not gonna say no. So that's the space that I'm coming from. From um, And then with Aziz in particular, you know, the piece that gets me is that she texts him. She said how she felt about the situation. And he apologized and said, like, that this is not, like, that's not the way I perceived it. I'm sorry. She didn't continue the conversation with him. She didn't have to, obviously. But if, like, you confronted him about it and, like, he acknowledged it, why then go to Babe? And then Babe, like you said, like, let's talk about why it was a horrible article on Babe. Mm-hmm. Um, no, actually, like, no, seriously, like, why was it a, hor- a horrible it article? It was a horrible article because they chose things that were, seemed irrelevant from the start, like the wine she chose and that BS. Yeah. And they, they wrote it from the start with a position against him. Oh, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, and, and the problem is then... It looks like it, it discredits the things she said because then it's no she never said they misquoted me, but the words around what she said makes the whole thing look like a smear campaign. Yeah, it does. And that takes credit away from the legitimacy of what she was doing. Now I, I hear what I hear what you're saying. My my issue is this. If again, I'm going by the account. If her account of what happened is wrong, yeah. then we can have a totally different conversation. But if we're going by the account of what she said, there are at least three separate occasions, maybe four actually, mm-hmm. where she said su- not suggested, stated that this was not what she wanted to do. She physically moved away from him and he chased her. Mm-hmm. That was one thing she said. She said, let's not continue. I don't want to hate you. That's pretty strong language. Ooh, I forgot about that. Yeah. She said, let's slow down. And then she moved his hand away when he tried to touch her after he said, let's just watch a movie. We don't have to do anything else. Yeah. And then he started again. It was like he was trying to lead her into it again. He yeah. was persisting until she gave in. Yeah. Then finally she did give in. And then did later... She? Did they? I thought she gave him head, but that was it. She gave in to start, like head, and then she said they did for a while have sex. Oh, okay. And then she submitted to it. So the thing is this. This is issues of ongoing consent. This is issues of pressuring, and it's just all around bad behavior for men. And what I'm trying to say is that these are signs enough to know that you don't need to have sex with this person that night if you respect them as a person. Yeah. If it was anything else but sex, you would pretty much say that you were trying to force a person to do something. If it mm. was like 
I wanted you to smoke crack for the first time in your life. Yeah. <laughs> and at four separate occasions, you did something like that. Evan, I don't want to hate you mm. as a friend. Yo, you're right. Evan, yeah. Evan yeah. let's slow down. Let's just stick with weed. Yeah. Evan, let, I'm just going to watch TV. Want some crack? It's like if But I, the, what if, though, like in between those things, like I smoke some crack with you. But I was like, I don't want to do this and I smoke some crack. But and that's not what, what, what happened was at times she... I don't know exactly at what point she did give in. I think at twice she did. She just gave in because the pressure was constant. Like, if I'm more famous than you, mm-hmm. and if I'm putting pressure on you, at some point you may give in. Yeah. It, it doesn't mean it's something you really want to do. You're trying to get a response from someone. You're trying to getting somebody to submit Yeah, is not the point of sex. Yeah, And it really should not come from someone who thinks about feminism a lot and had it on their show. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I can't argue with you. The crack analogy was a good one. Thank you. Because, like, who's going to dabble in a little bit of crack? Like, it's not going to happen. It, okay, so I want to do a quick thing about online dating, and then we're going to have an interview with our special guest. Okay. Who will be talking about, who will be talking about what's going on in Sudan, talking about perceptions of Africa versus reality, and women leadership in Africa as well. All right. So, I don't. I know you're not into online dating. Thankfully, you yes. got you got cuffed up yeah. before that. That really Thank happened. God, I'd be so bad at it. Uh, and I, I think. I'm thankful for you that that happened. <laughs> Thank you, me too. Really, it's hard out here. What I learned in online dating is that for so many people, they won't say it, but the dating is just an experience. They're not necessarily dating to commit, even if it's what they put in their profile. Because a lot of people just won't put that they want hookups. Yeah. Because they don't want to look a certain way, kind of like what you said earlier. Or they won't put that, you know, they really just want to date around. Yeah. They'll either not put anything or they'll put the opposite. Mm. So what I learned after having multiple occasions with a really good first date and then the person either ghosting, going away, Mm. then suddenly, like, it takes a 180 and the person says they're not ready or something happens. Yeah. Is... Something I didn't think I would ever say, which is try to get as much out of that one date as you can because the first may be your last. Yeah. (laughs) Treat each date you're on from an online date as a first and last date. Now, again, that doesn't mean to pressure into sex. Of course not. But it means that if you think that can happen, go for it. And the reason I'm saying that isn't just so you can have sex. It's actually deeper than that. It's because when you're dating someone online, Mm -hmm. you are competing against all the people that they know in real life <laughs> yeah. that they have not met online. Yeah. So that means you want to get this issue, this uh, notion of a date should be a quick, light, two-hour thing. Nope. Mm-hmm. Because that's not enough frequently for that person to make time for you in their calendar amongst other people. So what the reason I'm saying it's good to go home with them if it's mutual and if you can <laughs> is because you get more time with them. I disagree. Well, well, I just got to say, you can disagree, but remember, I've I've been on this online date hustle for a really long time. Yeah. Because if you go home with them, even if you don't have sex, mm-hmm. it's just more time with that person that they can use as evidence of who you are against the other people that they have in their quote-unquote real life, mm-hmm. and it's more likely they'll see you again. Because I- the less amount of time they have with you, someone who they met through the internet, yeah. just a random face on their phone, the more likely they're they're able to like almost dehumanize you yeah. and say, I don't need to respond to this person. I don't need to keep this, my plans with this person, just someone through the internet. But yeah. the more time you spend with them, the more it's like, this is somebody in my life now. Okay. I, yeah. I-, I disagree. Okay. I- I- so I would say... And I've been out of the game for a while, so like, feel free to laugh at me if you want. Um, and also, if you're listening to this podcast, we'd love to hear what you think. So, these things, like, they are temporary. They don't last long. And what you should be doing is just, like, go there and, like, looking forward to enjoying the company of another person. And just, like, looking at it as that. And if, like, anything else comes from it, great. I do not think, like... On a first date, you should be making any effort to, like, ask somebody to come to your place unless, like, you guys are, like, getting, like, physical in a way where it's like, oh, this is going to go somewhere. If it's that, then it's like, want to go to my place. If it's not, I mean, I think there are better ways to, like, maximize your time with somebody than, like, to ask them to your place. It's like, you know, we live in New York City, one of the greatest cities in the world. There are other things that you can do. Uh, I just, I mean, I wouldn't do it. And then 
all the women that I know, even with guys that they are really into, once like especially on a first encounter, you ask them to you ask them to your place, like they automatically assume that you you still ask them there for like a certain thing. Now, they could want that thing, they could not want that thing, but like it just doesn't work well. Um you, so I, I wouldn't do it. You know, I'm I'm telling you, man, I used to think the same way, but now I've been doing this for like consistently for two years now. Mm-hmm. And I'm telling you, it can it, it matters. Because it's not about the sex. And also I am only mentioning this if you think it makes sense to ask. Yeah. Don't force it ever. Yeah, don't be playing don't be bowling up like one No, but that's place. that's not what I'm talking <laughs> about because in the past, even if I felt the vibe, I would yeah. say, why rush? Why yeah. rush? There's always going to be a second time. Yeah. And then 50% of the time, there is no second time. Yeah. A good first date from online dating doesn't mean anything. Yeah. It really doesn't. So you need to maximize it as best you can. Yeah. And I hear what you're saying. It's New York. But I got to be honest with you. Yeah. After you go to a bar with someone, mm-hmm. have a nice drink, most people don't want to go to the park. Okay. They, they want to they wanna either, if they really are thinking about it, and mm-hmm. this is 2019, mm-hmm. I didn't realize how much some women think the end of a first date is going home with somebody. Mm-hmm. For the longest time, I thought exactly what you said, that it looks sleazy. Yeah. But then I had women afterwards tell me just as recently, I would have liked to go home with you. And I'm yeah. like, well, I thought we could do that on the second date, but yeah. I would have liked to give the invite. Mm-hmm. I didn't say that to her. I yeah. said, I just didn't want to rush you. Yeah. And then I never heard from her. Not There was a reason, which I told you. Yeah. Th- her situation was situation was a little complicated Mm -hmm. but i wonder if we spent more time together that night there would have been more for her to go on before Mm -hmm. making a decision that she wasn't ready to see each other again i mean maybe maybe not but but you always want to give more info yeah but like dating is a crapshoot in general even before there was online dating oh god thank god i'm not single um even before there was online dating it was still a crapshoot you could still go on a date with somebody and like it goes nowhere the like the point of dating is like that's literally what it is. Like it's like you're fucking like throwing shit against the wall and seeing what happens. And especially now, like especially if you're going out on dates with people like you don't know from like a previous environment. Mm-hmm. So with like it's work or school or something else, the stakes are just like the likelihood of a second date is like even like you know even lower. I just, you know I guess I'm talking from a position of strength where it's like if I'm engaging in that I'm not. I'm not in a rush. Like, I want to, like, get to know you. I want to fill you out. I want to, like, see where the conversation is going. If the energy is leading towards something else, like, it's very clear, then sure, like, let's make that move. But, like, other than that, like, I'm not going to bother because, you know, and it also, you know, I don't know where this person's been. So I don't, I might not necessarily want them in my place right away. Well, no, I'm saying you have to use your judgment, but. I'm talking about ways to maximize your experience and if you want to see this person a second time. Yeah, I think you can do that without inviting them to your place. That's what I, I'm saying. I think that it depends. I'm only talking about cases where it looks like the person wants to go. Like, so give me an example of what it looks like that they want You've to go. You've already made out. Possibly. Mm-hmm. They may not. They may not. But there's nothing that harm in asking. Okay. Or they've already suggested something sexual. Okay. okay. Or they already suggested they want to go to your house for oh, okay. something. Oh, in in those situations, yes, that makes sense. Okay. Or they're just flirting very much about your appearance, mm-hmm. about like y- it, the flirting's mutual. Mm-hmm. Like it seems to really be going in that direction. I am not talking about having it in the back of your head no matter what. Mm-hmm. I'm talking it. I'm talking about it given the situation. But like the, the the ones you mentioned, like a very clear like indicators, like oh, this may be a time where I'll invite them. But, like, if if it's going in that direction and I'm inviting them to my place, the expectation is we're, we're probably going to fool around a little bit anyway. Like, there's there's no, like, oh, we're going to go watch a movie there. You know, we could, but, like, if we're making out heavily or, like, heavy petting or, like, we're, like, flirting sexually, I'm not going to bring you to the house and then, like, put on fucking, like, the Avengers series, you know? No, you we're, can make out, but it, it doesn't mean you even have to do everything that night. Yeah, or but, do nothing. Or, or do nothing. It, it depends on what the person wants once they get there. Mm-hmm. They have every right to consent at every moment. Yeah, but like that's not maximizing it. That's like that's taking like that's like seeing a, win- mm-hmm. a window and like going for it. That but is like, maximizing, in my I mean, opinion. I mean, that's to say that like I don't know. I mean, sex is a, always a, a, a plus or like some intimacy. But, like, maximizing it as in, like, getting to know them better, knowing who they are, them finding out who you are, you don't need to invite them to your place. Bars are open to, like, 3, 4 in the morning. You can stay at a bar. You can go in a coffee shop. It's summertime. You can walk around the city. Yeah. So there's plenty of ways to just let the conversation but go. A lot of people would 
at that late time, they either want to be home or a lot. The, not everybody. A lot of people I've encountered don't want to be at a bar until three a.m. Yeah. You can also like they can go home. You can go home. You guys can FaceTime. You can text. You can talk mm-hmm. on the phone. My what my point is this: what you're saying is taking advantage of a window. But the way I look at it in the past was, I just in case this person, like they're flirting, they're kissing, mm-hmm. but they don't want to rush mm-hmm. past that. I always think, why not the second time? My point is now, if you see that window, take it, mm-hmm. because every moment you get with that person mm-hmm. is a moment that they can remember about you. And think about you when making a decision to see you again. So you think they're like, get in the house, put that dick on them, and now they're going to think about you. They may. (laughs) Or you don't put that dick on them, but you make out a lot. You Mm -hmm. get comfortable. You watch. Look, I told you. I made out and fooled around with the girl. We didn't have sex, but we did fool around. And we watched. We binged Queer Eye. Mm -hmm. And that was great. But then I never heard from her for six months. Yeah. And the thing is this. Like. Yes, there's uh, there's always Monday morning quarterback, right? Yeah. Like, I could have done X, Y, and Z. Yeah. But in the back of my head now, I am not going to think about next time. Yeah. I'm going to th- only think about this time yeah. and making the best decision for this time because I'm realizing that, w- especially with online dating, mm-hmm. you have to maximize that first date because it may be the first can usually be the last, even if it goes well. All right. I, mean, I We'll have to agree to disagree on this one. But well, I, I think you're you're thinking of me bringing this up at a time when there's like no hints, no it indicators. Is, it feels like you're framing it around like what it looks like to maximize a date mm-hmm. is like to get them to your place, and like for me, like so, like I disagree with that piece. I agree with like if the window was open and it's the first date, like just because it's the first date, don't be afraid to make that ask if it seems appropriate. I agree. That's with all that. I'm saying. I'm not I saying agree otherwise. With that. Yeah. But like that's different from like maximizing the experience. Because you can maximize the experience without someone coming to your place. You can maximize the experience without, like, fooling around. You know, you can just maximize the experience. Um, I've had plenty of times hanging out um, with, like, I mean, it's, it's very different for me. Because, like, I mean, it's been a long time. But I remember I went out on one date where me and this girl met at a bar mm-hmm. at, like, 10 o'clock. And we split ways at 5 in the morning. And because we hung out at the bar, it was great. We went bar hopping, different places. Went to a coffee shop, walked around the city. We, we walked, we talked. There was like a little street performance going on on Washington Square Park. We did that. We sat on a bench, and it was a great conversation. And that was like I think I maximized that day. We had a great time. Um, I really felt good about it. It didn't go anywhere. She <laughs> she was like, "Yo, like I had a great time. I really enjoyed it. You're really cool to talk to, but I'm not over my ex." And I was like, "Damn, that sucks." But I maximized my time of that date. Like, I left a really good impression, and I, and she did it on me. You still did. You were able to maximize time. That's By maximize, that's what I mean. I mean the amount of time you spend with the person so they'll get to know you more. Yeah. Now, in your case, she wanted to stay at a bar that late. Mm-hmm. And maybe the signs that you got made more sense to do that. Mm-hmm. And that's fine. Mm-hmm. If that's what it is, fine. But frequently, I mm-hmm. find that I used to go into these days thinking that at to ask someone to go home with you on the first date is bad because it shows you only want one thing. Even if I don't only want one thing, even if I don't even have to, I've had at least three separate times I've had a girl come over to our house, to my house. We just cuddle, we watch movies, and we didn't have sex, and I was completely fine with that. Yeah. But my point is you want to maximize your time, mm-hmm. and for a second date, I do think if you feel the vibe is there, mm-hmm. some sort of physicality matters. Yeah. Because I think that a lot of people... They, they rush to judgment, and if you have some sort of, even if you just kiss them, mm-hmm. then they know he's a good kisser, or yeah. then they can think about that physical moment that you shared. Yeah. Online dating, I'm telling you, is a different animal, yeah. because it's, it's like you're almost fighting to get yourself in that person's schedule, mm. in that person's life, along with people they met organically. And it's not easy to do that without having a really good time that has different levels to it. All right. The last thing I'm going to say about this. Damn yeah. it. This is how we always am going over yeah. because we end up having good conversations. Um, I think like where I'm p- pushing back on you yeah. at is like you're saying like you want to maximize your time, but it feels like you keep framing it towards like the sexual intimate stuff. Whereas I'm like, sure. Yeah. And like I'm saying, yes, but you can maximize your time doing other things. Because it's not like this or that. It's not like either like they want to go to your place because they're horny and then maybe we do something, maybe we don't. Or like they want to walk around and hang out at a bar. Or they don't. It, it's not that at all. It could be something different. It could be like you have a date. The date is going well. 
and it's like, oh, there's a play happening. You want to go check that out? And now you guys are going to check out a play, and you spend more time together. Or maybe there's a cool like part of the city they want to show you, so you go and do that. But like maximizing the time, at least in, in my mind, the way that I'm trying to like say it, is maximizing the time you two spend together and the opportunity to like get to know each other more, or at least like get more from that experience. And like getting more from that experience can be intimate with like hugging and cuddling and kissing. It can be sexual with sex and oral sex and like heavy petting and things like that. Or it can be like relational and personal. Like maybe you guys share some music together. Maybe you talk about life and your career. So like that's what I mean about maximizing the experience. Mm-hmm. Where I think like in your case, you're like don't like because these dates are like a, almost a crapshoot. If it's if there's an opportunity for like, you know for things to go further. Like, don't be afraid to, like, pull up from 40 sometimes. Like, it's not mm-hmm. as bad as you think it is. Which is, like, it's not wrong either. Mm-hmm. But, like, I, I'm just saying, like, these are the other ways you can maximize a date. It's not just that. I I, I agree with you as a ways to maximize a date. I'm just saying, after being online dates for two years and noticing a pattern here, and not just with myself, but with other men, too, it's that you are trying... It's not just about that date. If you're interested in the person, you have to do something that will lead to a second date. And the way to do that the most is to have the most interpersonal time. And sometimes that means you have to be alone because it's harder to do that after a certain point. If you're out, like you said, at a play is great, but you can't talk that much during a play or a movie. So you're trying to get the person to know you as much as they can to leave an impression. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that, because a lot of people they do wonder about how you'll be physically. Now, for me, I like to wait because I think it's actually more interesting to think about how that person is. It creates anticipation. Mm. That's more sexy to me. Okay, anticipation, Poppy. Yeah, but I think for some people, especially because we're all random, for some people that may mean to wait. But for some people, it's the opposite. For some people, that means I want to know now. Is he a decent kisser? Is he romantic? Is he these things? And if you get that vibe, take it. Because there's something about contact, Mm -hmm. that type of contact that I think men and women value a lot towards another time that you see the person because you've created a certain type of memory. Yeah. Well, I mean, so I want to push back on one thing you said is like you're under a short period of time, so you've got to do something to be memorable. Mm -hmm. No, you don't. I ain't got to do shit. I'm me. You show up as yourself and like they're going to feel it or they're not. Like, so like, I mean, I'm I'm like nitpicking a very small piece because I don't think that's all you were saying. There's more to that. But like, nah. Like you're hanging out there, like you guys are getting to know each other. Like this should this this should be enough. And I don't know. I'm not dating, so let me stop arguing with it's you. It's not just dating; it's online dating. It's a very yeah. specific kind. Yeah, I'm telling you, on, no, yeah. the strategy I'm talking about that I'm recommending for both men and women is very specific to online dating. We got to do a survey. We got to do a yeah. survey. We got to find out how people feel about this. Yeah, because online dating is completely different, and yeah. you are kind of trying to set yourself apart on that first date. Yeah. There's a lot of more effort that goes into it. But anyway, to be continued. Dating sucks. Like, set yourself apart. Like, I'm going to show up as me, sis. I, I feel <laughs> you, and I wish, and in a perfect world, that's how it would be. That's like the Hunger Games. But the thing about online dating is that you are one of many, both in, in real life, organically, yeah. and her other matches. Uh, it's like, it's it's an unfortunate game, but you if you want to get the most out of it, you kind of got to play it. I hope I'm never single again. Oh, my God. This, no offense, dude. This sounds horrible. All right. So, we're going to have uh, a guest on now. Um... A guest that I know personally. Uh, he is my friend and my colleague. And uh, we met over a year ago. It's hard to believe it. It's been, you know, it feels like it was just yesterday that we met. Uh, he has, you can sit in the middle, man. It's all good. So I want to I wanna introduce you, right? Am I going to say Sarin, Kara, Modu, Sheik, Sise? I mean, you got it. Some mix up, but it's okay. Okay. Let's go with Serena. I, I, I just call him Cisse. So, Cisse, thank you for being here. It's great Thanks to have you on me. the show. My pleasure. Okay. So, we got a few things to talk about. Stanley's going to come back. But uh, every day I feel like I learn something new from you about the world, about international uh, politics, international relations, about economics, and about Africa. And I wanted to use your knowledge here to talk about a few things um, because I think the U.S. does not always have accurate perceptions of Af- Africa. 
Because I think that the U.S. sometimes does not respect Africa as a continent. They look at it more like a country, which it isn't. It is not. Um, so first, though, a lot of people, um, they've been changing their profile pics. They've been talking about a crisis in Sudan, some call it genocide. I, I am not as well-versed on the topic, and I wanted to hear uh, your take on why um, there is such conflict within Sudan. Well, first of all, like you mentioned, Africa is a continent. Mm -hmm. We have more than 50 states. And um, it's quite important for people to know that they have various cultures, mm -hmm. various, um, various spoken languages such as Swahili, mm -hmm. which is, has now become a continental language and used at African Union headquarters mm -hmm. for formal meetings mm -hmm. during head of state. Um, the case of Sudan is quite interesting for the fact that a dictator, namely Omar al-Bashir, Mm -hmm. who has been hunted down by the International Penal Court mm -hmm. for genocide, couldn't be given away or turned over mm -hmm. by either South Africa or any other African state, got easily removed by his own people mm. over the raise of the price of bread. Over the price of bread? Yes. First wow. commodity, bread. <laughs> wow. Well, it's an important commodity, but still. Yes, because mm. when it comes to food... Uh, we have to understand that Sudanese people like to eat meat, whatever mm -hmm. good, and oftentimes quite mixed with bread. Mm -hmm. um, due to inflation in the country, due to the you know, U.S. sanctions okay. um, that was imposed on the government, the government decided to raise the price of mm -hmm. commodities, and the first one was bread, 5%. Mm -hmm. mm. But the struggle was not led this time by men, but mm -hmm. by women. Mm -hmm. So we have a man figure called Ala Salah, who was 20 years old, mm -hmm. uh, who has been the singing figure of the, of the group, mm -hmm. who has been using motivational words mm -hmm. to sing for the revolution mm -hmm. and maintain men on the streets mm -hmm. to overthrow a military dictatorship that ruled the country for 30 years. So how have civilians now um, been caught up in this violent conflict now, which seemed uh, political and economic to start, but now... Um, there are many, many civilian casualties. There are women being raped. How, how, does, how does that type of violence now come into play? Yes. Uh, is, is it true that not everyone has access to the true information mm -hmm. when it comes to um, the number of casualties, how many people have been killed, mm -hmm. how many women have been raped, mm -hmm. how many gentlemen have been put in jail, how many mm -hmm. people have been um, sentenced to death without mm -hmm. formal trial? But what has been known is the struggle is still ongoing. Mm -hmm. It may be underground, but they will come back stronger. Mm -hmm. And the military ruling committee that is currently overseeing the activities mm -hmm. of the government has mm -hmm. understood that the only way to mm -hmm. maintain peace and order in the country is by fair trial of mm -hmm. Omar al-Bashir, who has been killing people over 30 years. Mm -hmm. um, South Sudan has been rebelling against the central government due to his exaction. Mm -hmm. Um, there were lots of problems and issues related to oil resources and mm -hmm. diamonds. Mm -hmm. So he has to, you know, pay for accountability. Mm -hmm. So as of now, th we do not have formal reports by NGOs on the ground. Mm -hmm. But from what we've heard is that even though we have many victims, totaling around 85 women who has been either raped or detained mm -hmm. without formal trial, mm -hmm. um, we do know that the struggle is still ongoing. How do you see this ending? And you're given given historical examples that you've studied. It's not going to be easy. I mean, in the field of international relations, it's always moving, it's always changing. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not something that has been done, I would doubt that it has been done easily by the people without the support of foreign hands. Because mm -hmm. if you see Sudan is f very rich in oil, and we have the French government running after um, oil in that area, mm -hmm. The U.S. would come back stronger in the East mm -hmm. um, after supporting, you know, peace talks between mm -hmm. South Sudan and the central government of Sudan mm -hmm. that led to the independence of South Sudan mm -hmm. on July 9th, 2011. And then the U.S. government has tried to broker a peacekeeping agreement between South Sudan government itself mm -hmm. because there were internal rivalry between uh, Riyak Mashar and Salva Kiir. Mm -hmm on how to handle the money from the oil, which is the biggest problem. On the other hand, you have China coming into the country with offering scholarship, building um, schools and hospitals. 
but which is not a no activities because they are looking into something else. So it's kind of like a big jumbo pull and push diplomatic tour that would take place. So far, it's been quiet, um, and I doubt that the next year would, I mean, the next 35 days would be really interesting. The ending that I predict would be maybe imposing to mm -hmm. the current military ruling group to try Omar el Bashir. Mm -hmm. It's gonna. It would take time. Imposing by who? By the U.S. They may formally call it as um, the International Committee for Peace. They would find a diplomatic uh, to sweeten the talk, saying like, "We need goodwill from the international mm -hmm. community, mm -hmm. maybe under UN umbrella, maybe mm -hmm. under the African Union umbrella, mm -hmm. or the East African um, organization. <laughs> we call it SADC or EGAD, that would help to serve, you know, to try um, Omar al Bashir and his accomplices, but." What is interesting also as an observer is that the current ruling group mm -hmm. has been supporting Omar <laughs> al-Bashir for 30 years or so. <laughs> so can we expect justice? I do not think so. But at mm. least progress can be made. Okay. So do you think U.S. intervention or foreign intervention period should increase or decrease in this conflict? Uh, we have to observe it with two different angles. Mm -hmm. When it comes to civil society, human rights, yes. Mm -hmm. Because many African leaders are afraid of the U.S. justice system because mm -hmm. they know upon landing at New York, the FBI can arrest you. And depending on the report by the CIA mm -hmm. or other federal agency, you have to watch your back if you mm -hmm. decide to go to the U.N., here for mm -hmm. formal meeting, or you have to go to the U.S. for meeting with the World Bank or IMF, International mm -hmm. Monetary Fund. Mm -hmm. um, that's one aspect. When, so when it comes to human rights, health, sanitation, mm -hmm. um, woman development, the U.S. has to keep on maintaining that pressure. Okay. But when it comes to political will, mm -hmm. I think the local community has to decide about who they want as a leader. Mm -hmm. And the woman has to be part of this, mostly in Sudan, because mm -hmm. in, in the history of Africa, we've known that progress has been made only when women get involved. Mm -hmm. Do they uh, have the right to vote in Sudan? Uh, yes, it's, it's, it has been recognized by the Constitution. But, it's, but the, the problem is, how do we register for vote? Which how, is, do vote how do we register to vote? Yeah. Which is a big, crucial question. Um, we know... In, for politics, they may define which, I mean, which location would be in their favor for the government. And in that case, they would you know, give privilege to that specific mm -hmm. area to be registered for vote and make sure that they have full amenities to vote in peace. Whereas the other opposing regions may not have the same support. Mm -hmm. Instead, they would send just the army or some mercenaries to impose order. And also, in keeping the elections fair, the ballots being counted correctly. Are, are these, do you think Sudan is close to having a system where there can be fair elections? Until they make progress, as they have of now being suspended by the African Union, who mm -hmm. is the biggest watchdog in Africa, mm -hmm. um, progress can be made, like I said, if only the civil society become empowered mm -hmm. and strong institution has been built after deep negotiation. So the current administ so progress really rests on the current administration being tried. Yes. Okay. Yes, because there was like suspicion of money laundering, corruption. Mm -hmm. I mean, human extermination. Mm -hmm. People who have suddenly disappeared mm -hmm. while being in custody or just landing at the airport. So all those complaints need to be solved for healing process because mm -hmm. I think you have to create what they call the reconciliation committee. Mm -hmm where people who have done, you know, illegal exactions should come forward mm -hmm. and, you know, take accountability and seek for forgiveness, which has been the case in Congo, Rwanda, and other different countries, to seek, mm -hmm. um, you know, mm -hmm. people's um, forgiveness to maintain peace. Or to set up a formal institution mm -hmm. under the UN umbrella or the African Union umbrella to try... Mm -hmm those people have been found as culprits. So, so, so people within the administration are going to have to step up, essentially, too. It can't just be from outside. They're going to have to step up and take the hit, even like you said. And even though if they may be tried, maybe um, they'll get a lesser sentence or something. It's kind of like here that, you know, if someone from the Trump administration uh, was a whistleblower 
and maybe came forth and was able to talk about um, some of the things that are going on behind the scenes that could add to his impeachment case to some extent. Yeah, which is, um, well, the U.S. has a very strong system mm -hmm. when it comes to democracy level. You can become a whistleblower. And with the impact of um, the um, social media, mm -hmm. things can be diffused in a click, mm -hmm. which is not the same case in Sudan mm -hmm. because you may have paperwork that can show what you're talking about. But before <laughs> you hand it in to somebody else, you may face a hitman because uh -huh. they're watching, you know, it's kind of okay. like an a iron fist, you know, mm -hmm. regime. All right. Well, let's transition to you're talking about uh, women leadership. Yes. in Africa and how it's so important to progress. Let's continue uh, along those lines. Ha how has that happened in the past and where are we today with women leadership in Africa? And, and which countries do you think are, are better and more progressive and which countries do you think really uh, need have work to do in that area? Well, it's, it's very difficult to say specifically this country has made progress. Mm -hmm. But what has been shown by history and academic reviews is women have always impacted positively mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. people's life. Mm -hmm. Had you been in South Africa with Shaka Zulu, his mother, like I'm, we're talking about 33,000 years ago, mm -hmm. um, he has been influenced in his political mm -hmm. stance by his mother, mm -hmm. who was able to you know, give him knowledge mm -hmm. and strategies about how to rule mm -hmm. a kingdom. If you go to the West, um, upon, upon the arrival of the French colonization, they faced strong resistance. Mm -hmm. When the male failed to resist, mm -hmm. the woman stepped up saying, like, we are not going to allow you to touch our mm -hmm. bodies unless mm -hmm. you kill us first. Mm -hmm. And they set themselves on fire. Wow. That was, we call it a Dander Tuesday, N D E R Tuesday, mm -hmm. when more than 53 women mm -hmm. isolated themselves in wow. a room and burned themselves to death. Um, mm -hmm. In the south of, um, of, of, on the south of Africa, if you go still to Swaziland, we can see that history has shown that women was part of the struggle. Mm -hmm. You go to Bianzen, um Kingdom in West Africa, mm -hmm. the Fawn Ethno Group. That was like a strategic military group by women mm -hmm. to behead enemies. Mm. They were in charge of executing wow. all enemies. If you go to the West, still in Senegal, there was a f strong historical figure called um, Aliun Sitowe mm -hmm. Jata, who has been killed by the French mm -hmm. upon refusing to give up his community into slavery. So now, up to the 1960s, Patrice Lumumba, who was a big political figure in Congo, mm -hmm. has been executed by the, the, the colonial regime at that time. But his wife, who mm -hmm. has been schooled in France, walked naked over years in his country asking for reparation and wow. justice. <laughs> so, that's so far, that's, that is a st strong statement. In, up to 1990s, you have <laughs> Willie Mandela, mm -hmm. who was the wife to Nelson Mandela, who led the struggle against apartheid and there is a liberation. So, so far, we cannot deny the woman impact in, um, in, the, in, the, in the history of Africa. What but about today? Yeah, I was what just going to say elected officials today. Today, you can just observe Ethiopia. Eight months ago, mm -hmm. the prime minister suddenly died, Mela Zenawi. Mm -hmm. We had um, a, president, a prime minister who has been duly um, elected and who faced impeachment by the Congress. Mm -hmm. Wait, okay. they were elected and faced impeachment because of it? Yeah, yeah, because they had internal, you know, problem between ethnic groups. Okay. But the only solution for peace in the country mm -hmm. depended on a woman mm -hmm. who used to work for the United Nations mm -hmm. in Kenya. And she what's her name? Uh, I have to look into her name, but as of now, she's the current president of Ethiopia. Okay, I'll look it up. You Was she in the first woman president? Yes, in Ethiopia. Wonderful. Yeah. All right. That, that's, a good, that's a good note um, to cap this part off because you really gave such a broad history of women women begin, been getting it done since what thousands of years ago yes you said man so that hasn't changed that if you want something done frequently you got to have a woman involved and uh in the past it seemed to be alongside men or behind them but now more and more they're at the forefront at the forefront to, to any success. Even the last three years in Senegal, where I'm from, they imposed the government to pass a law. Mm -hmm. Like, to every high-level appointment, mm -hmm. if you have one man to the forefront, the deputy position has to be occupied by a woman. What? Wow. Yeah, so so that's progress Assembly. that a lot of people don't 
don't realize. Um, well, j- just real quick, actually, I just want to like say that the Ethiopian prime minister's name is um, Sael Work um, Zawede, and I'm pretty sure I butchered it aggressively. But um, she was she became a prime minister in 2018, yeah. and she's still in power now. So yeah. that's 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 the um, president of Ethiopia. Yeah. So we were gonna talk in more broader strokes about perceptions of Africa, but I think um, due to time and because of your very uh, detailed explanations, I think you've kind of already given different perceptions of Africa. That different countries have different struggles, and and the, even different have made different levels of progress when it comes to gender, when it comes to human rights. And just the thing that I wanted to um, demonstrate, which you have, is that you know it's not a monolith. That each country has its own struggle, and too often in the U.S. we look at Africa, uh, especially amongst us, the school systems, which are very white-dominated, Anglo-dominated, European-dominated, that it's a monolithic type of region, and it's not. And every we should study the different nations of Africa just like we should study the different nations of Europe. Could you give us some information, like maybe it's like one, one of your favorite like things to talk about from an African nation, from a country in that continent? Okay, my best take would be the current um, challenges that the European government, the American government, and the Chinese government are facing in Africa. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They um, empirically, the French came over to just exploit yeah. the African population. Mm-hmm. Awakening happened since 1995. It was slowly growing until 2003. That's the first reaction was like, we do not want France anymore. <laughs> yeah. Um, you can Google it. Central African Republic mm-hmm. has been creating the major protest against the French army, mm-hmm. who has more than three battalions on the ground, mm-hmm. urging them to go out or get killed. Oh wow! Wow! I was discussing last weekend with a friend of mine who who is a U.S. officer who just came back from deployment in Djibouti, mm-hmm. where we have a biggest uh, um, American base, and he was telling me like. What we didn't never knew was like we thought that women was oftentimes the victims, mm-hmm. victim of kidnapping, victim mm-hmm. of rape, victim of killing. Mm-hmm. But so often they are the underground leaders. Mm-hmm. African Africa is only the place where you can go get your mama to school you all night what to do the following morning, mm-hmm. and the following morning you have to respect it points after points. Mm-hmm. Many U.S. soldiers suffer of PTSD. Why? Because. When they observed the woman coming, they thought it was not a van enemy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> While that that woman was <laughs> the tactical leader on the ground. Mm. Wow, under she, can't underestimate. Yeah, and she was she was the intel agent. <laughs> she was the leader, and she was the officer on the ground. See? She would walk around giving indicator indication about where are the enemy position mm-hmm. and how to strike. Mm. And sex, so far, it has been successful. Somaliland is like the. F- eastern part of, of Africa, very far deep into the Red Sea. Mm-hmm. Why we cannot solve that equation until today? Because women are really involved in it. And you cannot violate the Geneva Convention when, on war practice. Like, if you see a woman and infants, you cannot kill them because mm-hmm. they have been protected under the Geneva Convention. Wow, so sexism is messing up our intel. A lot. <laughs> 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 so... Uh, when it comes to my favorite topic to talk about Africa is that, like, the new change. And I predict, like, if the U.S. is not um, enough informed about the realities that are ongoing now in Africa, we may lose uh, the game because China is coming back in with strongest offers, like, we, gov- we give you scholarship, we will exploit the, um, all the resources that you have, mm-hmm. and it's going to be a fair share between us and you. Mm-hmm. France is losing ground. What is the proof? Many unrest that are ongoing in French, in former mm-hmm. French colonies, urging for change. It mm-hmm. has been ongoing in my country. Mm-hmm. Has been going in, within France itself. It has been ongoing in Benin with local leaders like Kemi Seba, who was born in France and denied himself of his French citizenship to move back to to Africa wow. and lead the struggle. That's so things, thing, thing, things at the corner, and I'm pretty sure that things will change very soon. Well. I, I hope it does. Um, thank you for, you know, really giving a detailed historical analysis of that and really driving the point home about the impact that women have made um, 
over centuries in Africa in, in multiple ways, in multiple countries, from, from intel, leadership. So the thing we want to talk about next, uh, you and I have had a few conversations about this too, about the notion of consent. And I remember once you told me that even with someone you're with a lot, you always ask. Do you, do you want to do this? Do you want to do this? Always. And I think that's very important because a lot of men think that once they're with someone, I'm not saying you always have to ask the same way, but it's almost like the desire doesn't have to be there. You're my girlfriend. We're, I'm getting this. And it's, and it's important to care about what their desire is too. It's, it's, it's really important. And I think the way I've been raised in my culture is that there is no manhood into forcing things, mm-hmm. mostly against women, mm-hmm. until she says Yes, I think it's always enough. Mm-hmm. So I will just make sure that the yes is has been green lighted before mm-hmm. I proceed to the next step. And um, for my own sake, just to be on the side of you know mm-hmm. laws and stuff, I would prefer always to ask before k- <laughs> kissing, before searching, because yeah. it's always interesting to have the green light. So you know that it, you don't rush anything, and the woman is al- always ready for you. You know. It's important. And that's keeping the relationship that you already have with the person um, at, a good, at a good level because it, a lot of guys think that once you're in the relationship with someone, it's almost like you know that type of effort can go away. But you got to keep it up. I mean, that's what keeps the relationship going. It's keeping desire. It's mm-hmm. caring about desire. Yeah. I think if you want to feel comfortable with your woman, mm-hmm. make sure that she feels appreciated. Because yeah. the more they feel appreciated, the better they are at taking care of you mm-hmm. and the safest you will be because they will not look around and they will take care of you <laughs> no matter what. <laughs> That's my best bet on that. And also, it's, it's, it, I, I mean, it's just like we cannot think like women are half of us or we own them. Exactly. Instead, they own us because most of the time they can take care of themselves. Mm-hmm. They have so many efficient tools that they can use right? right? without even your help. So, but you always need that BBJ, right? You always need to get that head. You always need to. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta, we gotta use both heads. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. But we better watch our back by just mm-hmm. make sure, make, making sure that they feel appreciated. And I think that's something really important. You know, and also, I mean, obviously making sure women feel appreciated. But I think it's really important, like the understanding, like there is no difference. Mm-hmm. As far as like who was showing up and how, and men and women, and like if, if we start to look at them as equals, and, like making sure like that shows up in all parts of the relationship, mm-hmm. that's something that like I've like I'm still working on sometimes. Where you know like Marilyn is my partner, but then it's like oh, but like you know like I'm stronger. Are you? But oh, the man is supposed to be the breadwinner. Is he? So like that's something we should always be working on. Like this is a partnership. You're facing someone with exactly. equal like skill, strength, et cetera, et cetera. And, like, the more you're able to do that, the better the relationship can be because then you guys can set your own ground rules for, like, how you're supposed to show up mm-hmm. and where someone needs support where they don't. And even with the people you're in non-romantic relationships with, I think it, that's important, too. Yeah, I always look at it as your beautiful equal. That's, that's the term I always use for, for your partner. I think that she, she is your equal. Um, there may be things you are better at, and maybe in some ways you are stronger, and in other ways she is stronger. You need to complement each other and take care of each other. It needs to be reciprocal. So I was trying to, I can't log into my post because I wanted to talk briefly uh, for the literature component just about, we were talking about consent and I had a conversation with one of my friends to talk about how easy consent is. So first I put a list of things you could say. Some of them are funny like, may I get in them guts? That's one way to do it, you know. (laughs) Um, There was a few others like, uh, you know, my Netflix is canceled now. What you trying to do? But them guts is his go-to move. What yeah. you guys know that? <laughs> <laughs> um, or as simple as, you good? Like checking in. May I touch you? Anyway. But the other thing is that, that I want to put a whole, I want to really drive home is that consent is not that difficult as something to have on your radar. I wrote a post about when you go, when you get into certain situations, right, you have something in the back of your head as an outcome that may happen. So you got to be prepared, right? Mm-hmm. It can be anything. Mm. It can be going on a hike. You're preparing certain things. You might get, I don't really hike, so I don't know, you know, neutral gaming bars, tick. Some good repellent. sneakers. Yeah. Good something sneakers. to put around so you don't get lost. Yeah, there you go. Um, 
if you're going to go into a bar and you're by yourself, you know, I don't want to drink a lot because I'll have no one to take me home. Sure. Like, I got to be aware of these things. Or if you are going out drinking, you're like, I need a designated driver. Like, there's a lot of things that go into preparation. It's almost like muscle memory yeah. by this point. Yeah. Um, so when you go, in, whenever someone comes to your home or you go to their home or you feel like you're about to be sexually intimate, it's not that hard to have something in the back of your head that is all simple as comfort and consent. It's not hard. It's not hard to just say, okay, that's why uh, we may market this comfort consent cutty at, at LNBT stores near you. <laughs> but the point is that it's not hard to have that in the back of your head when you enter the situation that this needs to happen before this can happen. Yeah. So I, I think that if you look at it like that, like any sort of mental preparation you do before, like I even put the example in the piece about I used to play baseball, and before you see a pitcher, you prepare. Mm -hmm. You prepare what they may throw you. They may throw you a curveball. They may throw you a fastball. But you have in the back of your head. People have like all these John Madden crazy plays in their head mm -hmm. when they're looking at football. So it's like you are clearly able to have this notion of preparation before entering a whole host of situations. This is just another one. Yeah, that's a whole factor. I mean, I got no, I got no pushback on that mm -hmm. one for you, King. All <laughs> right. So anyway, I know we're, we're running over. So let's just end this with um, our usual ways we can empower women. Um, I'm going to start with something that you were bringing up, which is, you know, women in politics and something we talk about a lot. And it's important to empower women politically because they help to drive home change. And if that means that you donate to their campaigns, if that means that you work with them or a member of their campaigns, like Stanley ran Alessandra Biaggi's campaign. Um, I didn't run it, but yeah. Oh, well, was a big part in it, yeah. in, in the strategy. Mm -hmm. Thank you, King. And she won. Um, <laughs> she, I always joke she's the only one who came to my door. And I was completely unprepared to see a politician <laughs> of her caliber. Um, but be involved, support, go to bat for women politicians, go to bat for women making a change. Uh, because, you know, as Cissé was saying, throughout history proves that we need them and they make a difference. Yeah. Um, ways that we can empower women. I'm going to go on the left and, like, not talk about empowering women, but, like, talk about ways that, like, we can just, like, mm -hmm. get out of our own way. For men, it's like, take a second and read up on some of the amazing women who have done amazing things in our history and who are doing amazing things today. Um, and as always, get the fuck out of the way. Step back. Women don't necessarily need you to do things for them. They need you to get out of the way. Sure. And when it's an opportunity to step up and help, then do that. But, like, you don't. they don't need a hero. They need an ally. Right. I mean, I agree with both of you, and I think the major point is to acknowledge their capacities. Mm -hmm. Like, knowing that they are leaders as we mm -hmm. are, mm -hmm. they have strategies and efficient tools to use mm -hmm. when needs be, mm -hmm. the same way we think that we are efficient as they are. Mm -hmm. If we want to succeed in anything, mm -hmm. um, we must acknowledge that women are part of the game. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you can only find peaceful ends mm -hmm. only when they meet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, look at the struggles. Yeah. Women bring peace. Mm -hmm. They bring peace. They bring sensation. Mm -hmm. They give you motivational words mm -hmm. to face the struggle and, mm -hmm. and with positive out outcome. And that's, 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 that's the way to go. Maybe women should be leading these all these countries. We wouldn't have so many wars. <laughs> Maybe it would help. Yeah. Great job. That would be the best thing to do, though. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Right, um, any you. thoughts? And thank our guest. Thanks for having me. It was my great pleasure. That was really interesting. This, like the sit down information, that was really inter <laughs> interesting and helpful. Thank you. Um, I got to do some homework. Um, what are some good books we can read to learn more about like the countries in Africa? There are a lot. I mean... Um, for beginners, like for folks like me and Evan who like don't haven't started anything at all. It's a long walk to freedom. By Nelson Mandela. Oh, long walk to freedom by Nelson Mandela. Okay. okay. It, it, because he has been very attached to his mother, mm -hmm. and you would know that from every step in his life, you know, South Africa or the ways to UK, mm -hmm. then to the US, go back home, the jail sentence, um, the jail journey, and mm -hmm. then his release, mm -hmm. and you will see how woman impacted mm -hmm. on his life and how woman has been helped. 
him gotcha. to become successful, whether that was within the South Africa, the neighboring state in <laughs> Africa, or mm -hmm. abroad. And I think that's really interesting to know the dynamics between women, women as a mother, and and and, and us male as mm -hmm. sons, mm -hmm. women as wife, and us as husband, mm -hmm. and women as partners for change. Partners and I think change. that's really important. Oh, thank you. Thank you. All right, y'all. You heard that. You got a book to read now. Read that shit, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Um, Evan, any last thoughts? Uh, hey, vote, and when you can, vote for women. And like Stanley said, uh, when it when it's not necessary, you know, get out the way. Words right. <laughs> All right, guys. Peace out. Right. Peace out, Stanley. Thanks for having me. All right, one second. Stop Thank recording. You.